Hi, this is Carrie, and I am going to uh, try to show you via a video how I put in zippers. I used to use a technique that most people call the invisible zipper method, where the zipper is, there's fabric in front of it. When I wanted to experiment with something different, I started using a different technique, and that's what I'm gonna show you. I am not the only person that does this, but like all of us, there are a couple of little things I do. So, scrapbook of quilts, pillow along. And today is pirouette. Uh, I will be sharing that picture on the blog and on Instagram. I'd show it to you now, but it's not done yet. Anyways, all right. The technique I use, I'm going to show that right there, is it's basically similar to the same kind of edge you would put on a zipper bag. And it came about because I wanted to play, as I said, with some metal zippers. Here's the pirouette pillow. Sorry, you can't see more of it. But there is another example of how it is finished. It does a couple things. It is a fast and easy way to insert the zipper. It also, you can get rid of some of the metal parts that can be a little bit scary. And it makes the final assembly really easy because you get a nice edge on the corner. All right, the first thing you're gonna do, the other reason I like this is I can buy all one size zippers. I really like the 22 inch zippers from Atkinson. It means I've always got zippers on hand. Gonna use a permanent marker and you're going to fold your zipper, find the center and just mark it in the middle. That's the first step. Second step, make sure I get the right one here. You're going to then measure eight and three quarter inches. That's not a magic number. It is basically half the width of the finished pillow minus an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half. It just makes it work for a couple things. And you're gonna do that, you're gonna find it on both sides and mark it. Then you are going to stitch across the end. Let me find it and let it focus here. Does it focus? Let me see. Whoops, there we go, I'm sorry. Anyways, it will wind up that you're gonna stitch across that end. Here we go, there we go. And you're just gonna stitch across it back and forth a few times. Go slowly, be careful, because even though it is a nylon coil zipper, you can still break a needle. You're then gonna go ahead and cut off the two ends, the zipper tab end. Make sure that you have this open. You're gonna hold it together when you're stitching. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna get really, really good at feeding the zipper pull onto the ends of the zipper. Ask me how I know that. The next thing you're gonna do is cut two strips. I usually just cut it from my backing fabric. I cut them one inch wide because that's how wide the zipper tape is. And I usually go about eight inches long. It's longer than I need, but it gives me the advantage of I'd rather cut off extra than come up a little short. I also then cut a strip of SF-101 by Pellon. It is a lightweight, fusible interfacing. It is woven. This is optional, but I like the stability it gives it. I also like the finish it gives it on the outside. You're going to fuse that to your strips and leave about a half an inch from the ends. Uh, using a woven fabric for this was not my best idea. I've got threads everywhere. Anyways, leave about a half an inch, and it's okay if it goes a little over the center. doesn't matter. All right. Then you're going to prep the tabs, and you're going to press under 
a half an inch on either side. A glue stick works very nicely for that. And then you're going to press it, matching up the two ends, and press that flat. Then you are going to attach the tabs to your zipper. And what you're going to wind up doing is enclosing with the fused edge on top. You're just going to, and this I use a glue stick for this as well. Let me move this up. Practice, practice. And you just cover that. Another swipe of the glue stick. And here we go. Now it's ready to stitch. I take this over to my machine. I stitch across. I usually go backwards as well. I don't know why, it's just habit. And then I also stitch around the other three sides. It's not necessary, but it actually helps when handling it when I'm starting to actually attach the zipper to the pillow itself. So you're gonna get that on there stitched. You're gonna do it on both sides. That's done. Now, if you have a zipper foot on your machine, I recommend that you use that. I'm gonna to have to show this side of it to show. <coughs> I recommend you use a zipper foot. If not, try to stitch as closely to the coil. You'll see there's actually a little woven line in there that you can use as a guide. It's roughly a quarter of an inch. Don't worry about this tab being a little bit long. I'll trim that after. The little mark that you had made earlier, fold and find the center of your pillow back and match that up so that you have roughly the same amount on both sides. You're going to stitch all the way from one end to the other. Depending on the foot you're using, you might have to stitch up to a point, open your zipper, and then stitch the rest. But you're gonna get one side completely stitched. Let's throw that aside. I use the overcasting foot on my sewing machine and a zigzag stitch to overcast and encase the seam. The biggest thing it does is it gives me a nice clean finish. It also holds up really nicely through washing. Totally optional, totally recommended. The next step, I top stitch. I'm getting better at holding this up to the right amount, aren't I? Anyways, um, I top stitch. It does two things. It catches the zipper tape to the back, also keeps it nice, clean, gives it a smooth finish. Stitch all the way one end to the other. Now is when you can go ahead and trim this right even with the edge on both sides. Throw that aside. <clears throat> now you're going to do the same thing, starting on one end and stitching your zipper onto the back. There you go, here's your line of stitching. So that's now attached in there. I then will go ahead, overcast it, top stitch it, and there you have it. And yes, I did use little short samples rather than trying to make whole pillows for this. And that is my zipper installation. Then when it comes time to actually assemble this, that folds so easily, so smoothly that it makes a really nice, good, sharp corner. Whoops, there we go, get that up. Uh, the other thing, I am consistent when I sew the zipper on the front side. I always have the zipper tab down at this end. Not for any reason do I think that it is required it just gives me consistency and it puts the zipper pull down at the end. So there you go. That's how I put in a zipper. Now I have to go clean up the mess. Maddie has discovered the scrap bag. Anyways, thank you. Bye.